Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we got a next oldie but goodie for you. We have a Principles of Business paper one from May June 2011. Yes, all the way back to 2011, but still some of the questions are relevant today. So let's just jump into it. Number one, which of the following is not a function of money? And the answer here is A, indivisibility. Number two, which of the following are functions of a business unit? And so you have the options here: creation of jobs education of workers maximization of sales and you have production of goods and services and so i mean at a glance it would look as though the answer would be one two three and four but there are no options for that so therefore the best answer for here would be c which is creation of jobs you have the maximization of sales and of course you have the production of goods and services so that's c Number three, which of the following characteristics of the sole trader form of business is not advantageous to the owner? Not advantageous. And so, of course, the answer here is A, unlimited liability. With unlimited liability, the owner can lose more than they even bargained for. You can lose all what they owe. Well, you can lose up to the house or whatever in order for the bank to get back their money that they borrowed. All right, number four, in a public limited company, the losses are borne by the... And of course, the answer would be the shareholders. All right, did the shareholders. Number five, which of the following types of business environments is most typical of the Commonwealth Caribbean? And we've seen this before. And so the answer here is B, a mixed economy. Number six, which of the following responsibilities must be assumed by the management of a company? And you have options here again, pricing goods of, pricing goods of a marketable, producing goods of a marketable quality to maximizing efficiency and creating surpluses three determining div dividends to be paid to shareholders and four maintaining good communications and human relations with the staff and of course we are going to choose d which encompasses everything all of these can be seen as responsibilities of management all right next one number seven we've seen this before so they ask, the relationship between the highest level of management down to the various departments is known as, so that's up here, come right down, and so that's one, that's a line right there, so that's a line, a line, come right down. All right, staff would normally be all the other attachments and the other things applied to the structure, organizational structure. Number eight, setting objectives and procedures for achieving goals are referred to as, of course, the best answer here is planning. Number nine, a major role of trade union is to encourage C, advancement of the welfare of its members, whether it is for their, their, their job security or for good work conditions or good wages. Number 10, the primary role of the human resource department of a firm is to A, hire, recruit, train, and motivate employees. Number 11, which of the following organizations is the least likely to use a management information system or MIS? And so the best answer would be uh, C, a shoeshine shop, because I don't think this shoeshine shop has as much intricate um, affairs to manage as these other businesses. A department store need to know inventory, when to restock, that kind of stuff. The bank, of course, need to know about the customers, the savings, a lot, a lot of information need to be in the bank. The beauty supply outlet would need to know, again, to make, manage your inventory properly, the client properly, those kind of things. But shoe and shop, you know, you just go shine shoes and call it a debt. So they have less of this stuff needed for MIS. Number 12, which of the following functions of the entrepreneur? Which of the following are functions of the entrepreneur? And we have one, providing finance needed for production. So that's true. Two, coordinating the factors of production. Yeah, that's true. Three, undertaking risk by anticipating demand, that's true. And four, ensuring that workers join a union, no. So the best answer is C, one, two, and three. Number 13, cash used to secure a loan at a bank is referred to as, of course, the best answer here is collateral. If you look at it right here, all of these are formed, can be used as collateral. Fixed assets, you have things like vehicles, equipment, you can use those as collateral. Uh, current assets, you can use those as collateral, a fixed deposit, you can also use it as collateral. So the, the answer here is collateral. Number 14, which of the following situations illustrates entrepreneurship? And of course you have B, a farmer who uses the fork to plow his land. He's his own boss. He's engaged in his, his production. 
So of course, B would be the best answer. Now, this a secretary who uses a computer? No, she's a secretary. She's not really showing entrepreneurial skills there. C, an assistant who developed a software application for his job? Again, he's an assistant. He's not really an entrepreneur. He, he's not, he's not, he doesn't own the business. An employer who goes to work? On a, so employer right there. So the best answer is B, the farmer, because more than likely the farmer owns the land that he's plowing. Uh, number 15, an entrepreneur may reduce the risk of loss by A, planning, of course, planning ahead. Number 16, an overview of a business plan is contained in the D, executive summary. This contains every single aspect of the business plan in a more concise, smaller format. Number 17, which of the following factors prevents an agreement from being considered a valid contract? And so we have the best one here, which is C, misrepresentation. Misrepresentation. Number 18, the monthly payments collected by an insurance company on behalf of its policyholders are known as B, premiums. Number 9, which of the following describes essential features of a valid contract? And so the best answer is A, the offer has been communicated to the offeree. All right. The offer, you have B here, the offer is made in writing. It doesn't have to be in writing. It can be oral, so that's kind of the answer. C, a counter offer has been made by an offeree to the offerer. And so when you have a counter offer, that's not really saying that it, uh, you don't have to counter the offer all the time. You're going to accept it as it is. So is that really a feature of a valid contract? Is a contract is one of, not, that's not one of the essential features. D, the acceptance is made in writing to the offer. And again, it doesn't have to be in writing. It can be a handshake. It can be a wink, a nod. Once you understand, once each other understand, once you understand each other. So the answer is A, the offer has been communicated to the offeree. Number 20, a post dated check is one which A, is dated for payment at a future date. Number 21, the money used for the day-to-day -day operations of a small business is called D, working capital. That's the money, that's the money they use day-to-day -day in running a business, working capital. Number 22, which of the following is least likely to result from a growth in an organization? And so you have the best answer here is C, increased communication. Of course, if the organization grows, there might be greater productivity. That's a great chance of that happening. A great chance of division of labor happening. And of course, increased capital investment. But what is least likely to happen is increasing communication. When it doesn't get bigger, when it gets bigger, you have more and more people, so communication becomes more and more difficult. You don't even know, sometimes you don't even know who your boss is. You might see somebody who's a boss of a boss of a boss, you know, so communication could break down. 23. What is the most likely if effect on developing economy when professional and skilled labor migrate to developed countries? And so you have something you call a brain drain phenomena. And so the best answer is C. Production levels of goods and services will decrease because they're saying all of the productive people are leaving the country, so therefore production should decrease. Number 24, in the Caribbean, many people are hired for sugarcane farming and very little equipment is used. This industry can be best described as, of course, A, labor intensive. You can either be labor intensive or capital intensive. Capital intensive means there's a lot of money, it requires a lot of money and, and, and resources, such as equipment and expensive equipment and stuff like that. But labor intensive means that, like, like farming, it requires a lot of hard work, a lot of workers' labor. Number 25, which of the following factors of production earns interest? And of course, we have B, capital, because land, you earn rent, labor, you earn a wage or a salary, and enterprise, you earn profits. But B, capital, you earn interest. 26, which of the following factors does not affect the supply of labor? And of course, C, the population census, because the population census simply tells you what the supply of labor is. Migration, for sure, would cause it to fall, Birth rate, if birth rate go up, more than likely in the future, the labor, pop, labor supply should go up. If it goes down, then it decreases. School even age means that based on the age, you're going to affect how much people enter the workforce and when. So it affects the supply of labor. 27, which is the following product of the manufacturing industry? And so the answer here is B, a car. Gold is from the primary or extractive industry. The lumber is from the extractive industry. And the house is from the construction industry. But manufacturing, you have the car right there. Number 28, which is the following can be described as a marketing activity. B, distributing commodities to the outlets. 29, the primary function of advertising is to A, communicate information, whether it is the price, whether it is with the location of the business, 
whether it is the name of the product, that kind of stuff, is information you're looking, and that's what advertising gives. It could be, it could be, inf- it could be, you know, real information. I could be a little heightened, you know, a little sensational, sensationalized, you know, advertisement. But still, you get some information from all of the above. Number thirty, which of the following markets in situation typically found where there is a large number of producers and consumers? And so the best answer here is B, the perfect market. In the imperfect market, you don't have this going on. All right. In the in the monopoly, you have one supplier and many buyers in the oligopoly you have about two suppliers and many uh consumers all right number 31 which is the following characteristics best describe perfectly competitive market and so the best answer here is c production of almost identical products such as the farming industry potato from one farmer look almost the same as potato from another farmer uh, milk from one farm look um, almost the same as milk from another farm. So you have C, production of almost identical homogeneous products. Number 32, the price of an item is usually high when the number of people wanting to buy it is, and of course the best answer is A, large. So when the number of people who want to buy something is large, but the quantity of that item for sale is small. You're going to have the price going up, and that's just like we you have not really auction per se, but the bidding up of the prices because a lot of people want the same thing, but it's a little bit. So of course, you're gonna say, "I don't give you five dollars for it." No, I give you ten for it. No, I give you twenty. So the price will skyrocket. Number thirty-three, which of the following is not a function of the retailer? And of course, the best answer is D: transporting goods to suitable storage facilities. That's normally the job of a wholesaler. Number thirty-four, which of the following must be taken into account when packaging goods for retail? And so you have some options here: cost, brand protection attractiveness and so the best answer here would be all of the above one the cost two the brand for sure protection of the of the items for sure and of course you want it to be attractive or else the market will really go towards it all right and so that's d is the best answer for that one 35 which is the following can have the uh, shares traded on the stock exchange and of course that's an advantage of the public limited companies so let's see public limited companies they can trade their stock on the low the public stock exchange 36 Tom invests his savings by buying shares in a company from this investment Tom expects to receive and of course the best answer here is D dividends when you buy shares your reward would be dividends that if the company pays it out 37 which is the following are responsibility of a commercial bank you have control in the money supply that's not one so that's not one that's a, that's the central bank two offering loans and small businesses for two small businesses yes three accepting deposits from customers yes and four asking acting as the bank of the government no that's the central bank again so the best answer is b two and three 38. One of the major functions of the central bank is to A. Issue notes and coins. 39. Investment can be defined as B. Addition of capital stock to a country. 40. Which of the following institutions are not regulated by the central bank? And of course, the best answer here would be a joint stock company. A joint stock company is simply a business that has a lot of different. A lot of different subsidiaries, a lot of different branches. You might be into automotive, you might be into financial, like Grace Kennedy and those kind of companies that have their hands in a lot of different parts of the economy. All right, uh, let's see now, 41, which of the following graphs shows regressive taxation. And so the best answer is D. And, you know, a regressive tax is one where as your income increases, your tax burden falls. So you see the income is going up. And the tax burden is falling but when the income goes down the tax burden increases, so it affects the poor negatively 42 the term subsidies refers to a grants given by the government now that's the best answer for this one grants given by the government uh b taxes are withheld no loans given to small businesses no like you don't have you do not have to repay a uh, subsidy d profits realized from investment no uh, so subsidies are financial assistance that government give to businesses to help them to reduce the cost of production. 43, we have which of the following measures are used by government to redistribute income? And so the best answer here is C, pay as you earn or national insurance. Redistribution of income simply means that the government is going to take money in the form of taxes 
from basically the rich and use them to fund programs such as national insurance that can benefit both rich and poor alike, but more so the poor. 44. Tax paid on wages and salaries are referred to as a business income tax. 45. Which the following is not regarded as a role of taxation. And of course, the best answer is D. Influencing the investment decisions of publicly owned enterprises. Now, let's say A. Raising revenue for the government, of course, that's the main reason for taxing. Uh, B. Influencing the distribution of income and wealth, as I said before, taxes can be used to take from the rich, in a sense, and give to the poor for things that they can afford, like welfare and those kind of things. And C. Influencing total expenditure on goods and services, yes, because taxes can be used to either encourage someone to buy something or deter them from it, such as alcohol, tobacco, those kind of things. 46, which of the following forms of taxation can be classified as direct, and I mean, it come directly out of your salary, or, uh, you know, that's the best answer here is, the only answer here is B, income tax. As soon as you get paid, the money comes out, goes to the authorities, and that's that. All these other taxes are consumption tax in a sense, because you only pay them when you engage in that particular activity. 47, which of the following institutions is involved in protecting the customers? And of course, the best answer here is B, A, the Bureau of Standard. A, the Bureau of Standard. 48, a government can correct an uh, adverse foreign exchange problem by B, increasing custom duties. Increasing custom duties, meaning that you're going to discourage people from importing stuff. If it's more expensive to bring them in than to buy local, then you would not want the foreign currency to go and buy foreign uh, items. You're going to buy local because it's too expensive to buy foreign. 49, which of the following is likely to affect the standard of living in a country? And so you have some options here again. A, a high crime rate, yes. Uh, two, a low literacy rate, of course. Three, widespread pollution, yes. And four, Poor advertisement. So the best answer is C, 1, 2, and 3. Number 50, which of the following practices would not contribute to the economic development and growth of a country? And so the best answer is A, increased importation of consumer goods. There's no way increasing imports can, can help with the development of a country in a sense because if you're importing, that means you're not supporting the local economy, and so the local economy is not growing. All the money is leaving that economy. Number 51, which of the following is not a benefit of international trade? And so the best answer here is import, import restrictions can be imposed on foreign items. Now they say, A, political links are developed with other countries. Yes, that's a benefit of international trade. You see the Taiwanese and the Chinese and other countries are, you know, tight with the Caribbean countries because of trading. Uh, B, producers are able to increase their market size, of course. You have a broader reach, you have more people to reach out to. Uh, C, a greater variety of goods is obtained, of course. You can produce every, everything in your country. So as you engage in international trade, you'll be able to obtain more items, more products. Number 52, export licenses are used mainly to, and the best answer is enable government to control the flow of goods being exported. Keep the eye on what's going out of the country. Number 53, a country, a country has a favorable balance of trade when B, it sells more than it buys. Simply means that it exports more than it imports, and so that gives you a favorable balance of trade. You got a surplus right there. 54, the buying and selling of goods and services among countries is called B, international trade. 55, which, the, which of these methods can a government use to reduce unemployment? And so the best answer is C, employment level uh, levy on firms. Let's look at A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D. Now, if it was A, increase income tax. Now, if it increases income tax, that would cause the, the, the money, the disposable income for people to actually fall. So it might come to a point where you say, it doesn't even matter, it makes sense I work because I'm working for to pay tax. And so you might drop out of the workforce because it's not encouraging to continue working because the tax is so high. Then you have B, deflation of the economy. Of course, when you have deflation, that means that uh, a lot of companies are going to reduce their level of production. And if you reduce the level of production, you, you, you don't want as much persons employed, and so you, lay off, you begin to let off people. It's a cycle. And then you have D, increased interest rates on borrowing. Now, 
if you increase the interest rates on borrowing, that simply means that nobody is going to borrow. Businesses are not going to borrow because it's too expensive. And as such, you're not going to have much investment. And if you don't have much investment, you have no need to hire more people. So the best answer is C, employment levy on firms. All right, 56. To correct an adverse balance of payment position, a government, B, increase exports. You want to make, you want to get your balance of payments on the upside, you increase your exports. You earn more money by exporting. 57. Which of the following trading agreements is Barbados promoting when it sells furniture to Jamaica? And of course, it's CARICOM. All of us are part of the CARICOM trading block. All right. Uh, it's not NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. That's where all the countries have a deal with America and deal with America, Canada, and Mexico. Uh, then we have the GATT, the now for this one here, it simply means that all the countries in the current country would export goods at the same tariff. All right, the same tariff, the same percentage. So products leaving all Caribbean countries would enter the United, United States at the same level of tariff. And then of course you have the OECS, Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. That's within most of the Eastern Caribbean countries and neither Barbados nor Jamaica are members of OECS. All right, then we have 58. Which of the following practices may be most appropriate in solving the unemployment problem in a developing country with large labor force? And so you have some options here. Increase salaries, increase mechanization, increase in vocational training and programs, and for greater production through increased labor. And so of course, increase in vocational training, go to train the people, then they are gonna be able to develop and be more re ready to do certain jobs, so they'll be more employable. Then you have four, greater production through increased labor. So of course, that means you increase the production, and if you increase the production, you're gonna need more labor. Of course, it cannot be increased mechanization, it cannot be that. Because if you increase mechanization, that means you're laying off people to replace them with machinery. And increasing salaries simply means that bosses have to pay more money now, and if you have to pay more money, you might lay off some people because you can't afford your payroll. All right, 59. We which of the following are major arguments in favor of free trade? And so you have some options again. Protectionism, that's, that's not one. Trade specialization, increasing world output, comparative cost advantage. And so the best answer is three, four. 2, 3, and 4. It's not protectionism at all, so it's D. Number 6, which of the following countries are not members of the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States? And of course, we just discussed it all up there. And so we have C, Barbados, and Jamaica. They're not a part of the OECS. All right, so that's the end of the May-June 2011, way back when, 2011, CISEC Principles of Business Paper 1. And so that's the end for it. Now you know what to do. You like the video, you subscribe. And you hit the notification bell to know when I drop another video. And so that would be it for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.